Hi, in the previous tutorial we looked at how to add code to our game that would make an object move constantly. So we tried out some different code to make an object move right and then move down and right at the same time and move away from the camera. Um, and it did that constantly throughout the game. As soon as the game loaded, it would start moving and then it would disappear into the distance or off the screen. So that was all controlled by a piece of code um, written in JavaScript programming language. In this tutorial, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make an object move. So we're going to make this box move, but we're going to do so with keyboard input. So we're going to get the user to have to press keys on the keyboard to control the object. So this is the beginning of being able to allow a player to interact with the game. So move things around and control them. All right. So um, just quickly, I'll show you what I've got here. I have a camera and it's looking at this box over here. It's looking at it right in front of it. So the camera can see the box right in front of it. And then I've got a directional light as well. And of course the box is there. Um, in the last tutorial, I made a script. So in the assets panel, we go into the scripts folder. I have a script called move.js. Okay. If you need to create a new script, just click on add asset script and um, you need to then apply the script to the, the object, the 3D object that you're going to control. So in this case, it's the box. So I can select the box, click on add component and choose uh, the script component. All right, I've already done that. So I've got scripts here and I just had to drag the script on there and let go, um, which I've already done before. So you can see now that the move script is already attached to this box entity. Okay, so I've already got the script there. Um, I used this script last tutorial, but I've deleted all the changes that I made. So now it's just an empty script with the normal template that comes with an empty script. So I'm going to start coding. Click on edit to load the code editor. And as soon as this script loads, you can see that it's just the same as any other script that you would create in Play Canvas. So as soon as you create a script in Play Canvas, you get all of this information there included and you get these two things, initialize and update. All right. Now, if you're not sure what those two things mean, then you need to go back a couple of tutorials. All right. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what we did last tutorial and that was, um, use, um, a method of, um, moving an object with code but I'm only going to do it when a key has been pressed on the keyboard. And to do that, I'm going to have to use something called an if statement and in coding in any modern programming language, an if statement is used to basically ask a question. So is something true or not? Is something true or is it false? Has something happened or has it not happened? And depending on the answer you get to that question, you can run different pieces of code. So for example, I can ask the question, um, has the right arrow key been pressed on the keyboard? If the answer to that question is yes, so if it's true, then I can put in some code to move the object, move the box right, okay? So in other words, if the key, the right arrow key on the keyboard is pressed, then the box will move right. And then I can do it again, I can ask another question. I can check if the left arrow key has been pressed and if so, I can move the object left and then I can ask if the up arrow key has been pressed and if so, move the object up. So you can ask different questions and then the game can react or the program can react to uh, whatever answer that question gets. So to you to write an if statement, firstly, and this is in the update section of the code, so underneath the line that says update. And between these two brackets, you need to put that code. All right, so I'm going to say if, all right, so I'm starting an if statement. And an if statement has two parts, all right? Inside brackets, just normal brackets, there's a condition that you specify, all right? So the question that you're asking goes here, okay? Um, so you're checking whether something's true. And then after that, inside curly brackets, you specify what you want to occur if the condition that you, or the question that you're asking, if that evaluates to true. All right, so we'll start with this. We've got if, and then inside these brackets, we'll put app 
dot keyboard dot was pressed. All right, so so far we're asking if in this app on the keyboard was a key pressed, okay? Um, but we need to specify what key we want to check for, all right? So we want to check firstly if the right arrow key on the keyboard was pressed. So inside this, uh, inside these brackets, we can add another set of brackets, all right? So, so far we'll have an open bracket here, another open bracket, and then two closing brackets. Inside this little bit here, we can now specify which key we want to check for, which key on the keyboard was pressed. So we put pc.input, and don't be put off by PC, it doesn't matter. This, this works on any browser, or sorry, any platform, PC or Mac or whatever. So we put pc.input.key in caps. All right, and at this point, as we start typing, you can see that there's a list of suggestions that come up. So you can scroll through and there's different keys on the keyboard here. So we've got like the number keys on the keyboard. We've got things like the backspace, caps lock, um, the enter key, all the function keys. All right, we've got um, page up, page down. All right, and then we have um, letter keys as well in there. So we've got like key G, that means if you press the letter G on the keyboard. All right, so we want to check if the right arrow key was pressed. So I already know what that is. It's key uh, underscore right. Okay, so as I type it, it's already, it's coming up in the list there. So it knows that that's a key on the keyboard, it exists. All right, so I've got if, and in brackets, app.keyboard.was pressed, and then in brackets again, pc.input.capital letters, key underscore right. So now we're checking if the right arrow key on the keyboard was pressed. All right, so that's the condition. Remember, if you open a bracket, you must close it. So if you have two open brackets here, then you must also at some point have two closing brackets. All right, if you leave one out, you're going to get an error or a problem. That's the condition inside those normal brackets. The next thing inside curly brackets is the um, what will happen if this condition evaluates to true. So if you ask this question, was this key pressed? If that's true, if the answer is a yes, then whatever inside whatever code is inside these curly brackets will run. All right. As soon as you type one curly bracket, it will automatically put a closing one afterwards so you can just hit return and so now whatever code is inside these two curly brackets here will run inside this if statement okay and it automatically align indents and moves across a bit okay if the answer to this question is false so if that key was not pressed then it will just skip any code that you put inside these brackets and continue on in the program all right so if the if the condition evaluates to false or the answer is no, the right key was not pressed, then it will skip any code that you put inside these brackets and it will continue on with the rest of the program. This code, or this, this question here, this if statement, it's going to be checked every single frame during this game because it's inside the update section. So every single frame, several times a second, it's going to be asking this question, was the right arrow key pressed? All right. So if the right arrow key is pressed, then what we want to do is we want to move the cube to the right a little bit. So we can say this dot entity dot translate local. All right. So we're going to translate or move the object and we're going to move it right. So left and right is on the X axis. So in brackets, that'll be the first thing that we put in. All right. We need to specify three values here separated by commas. The first one is the X position value, second one is Y, and the third one is Z. But because we're only moving it right, we only need to put an actual number in for the X axis. So we can make it a positive number because it's moving right. And because this is, it's, you know, it's um, a little number can move it quite a lot. So we're going to make it quite a small number. We'll just make it something like 0 0.1 to begin with. All right. Then so it's going to move on the right axis um, 0 0.1. It's going to move that amount each time we press this key. Okay, then we can put a comma. 
Um, we don't need it to move on the Y axis, and we can put a comma, we don't need to move it on the Z axis either. So it's only moving in a positive direction, in other words, right, on the X axis when the right key is pressed. Can end that line with a semicolon, and that's pretty much it. So we can save it. Okay, and as soon as that code has saved, we can go back and we can launch the game. All right. Now, unlike in the previous tutorial, as soon as we loaded the game, the object started moving. All right, because we just specified that as soon as the game loaded, we wanted to keep that object moving. But now, because we have an if statement, it should only move right if we press the right arrow key on the keyboard. So I haven't pressed any key yet, so nothing's happened. If I press the right arrow key on my keyboard now, it should move to the right a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna do that now. And there we go, it just moves a little bit. So every time I press it, that cube or that box is moving a little bit to the right. Okay, and if I stop pressing it, it does nothing. Okay, if I press any of the other keys on my keyboard, like different letters or spacebar or whatever, it doesn't do anything either. All right, it'll only do something if I press the right arrow key. Now, one thing to notice is that if I hold down the right arrow key, it only moves once. It doesn't keep moving it if I'm holding the key down, but we can change that. So we can close that and go back to the code. And instead of having was pressed, which will check whether the key was pressed, we can change that to is pressed and it can check whether it's currently being held down, that key on the keyboard. So if we change it to is pressed and save it and then relaunch the game, whenever we press that key on the keyboard, it should move in the same way. It should move a little bit to the right. So press right, moves a little bit, but it's checking every single frame whether the key is currently being pressed. So if we hold it down, so I'm just holding it down a little bit, it keeps moving, okay? So you can hold that key down and it will keep moving because it's not checking whether the code, or whether the key was being pressed in the last frame. It's checking if it is if it is being pressed. And it, as long as that key is being held down, the answer to that question will be true and it will keep running this code. So it will just keep moving it constantly. All right. Now, what we could do now is we could make it move left when the left key is pressed. So all we have to do really is copy so we could right click and copy and then paste this code. And what we can do is just change a few things. So we can change to check if the left key is pressed instead. So we can change it to if app.keyboard.is pressed and then pc.input.key underscore left. And then we could make on the X axis, we can make it a negative number instead. So then it will move in a negative direction on the x-axis, which happens to be left. All right, so this time I'm gonna press the left key and see if it moves left, it does. And I can move the right key and move it right as well. All right, so we can move this object left and right. Okay, now, not very useful at the moment, but if you're making a game where you need to move a character around, um, which is likely, then you'll want to have some sort of keyboard input detection, which we've just been doing. Okay, or maybe you want, maybe you're controlling an object in the game and it needs to avoid, avoid obstacles or other objects coming towards it. And you might want to move that object around with the keyboard. So keyboard input is very useful in a game and mouse input is also very useful. And we'll be looking at mouse input in one of the next tutorials. Okay, um, so going back to that code, we can just basically keep copying and pasting this if statement and we can just change it a little bit each time. So now what we could do is change this to key up and we could change this one to key down and we could change the X value to zero. And because we're pressing the up key, we want the Y value to be a positive number. So we can put a positive number in there to move it down, we don't need to move it on the X axis, but we need to change the Y value to a negative number so it moves down on the Y axis. So something like that. Okay, so now we've got key right, key left, key up and key down. So when any of those four keys are pressed, any of those four arrow keys are pressed on the keyboard, it should move in one of those directions. So let's launch again 
and test for the final time. All right, press left, press right, press up and press down, okay? And you can hold them down at the same time like that so you can get things to move both up and right or down and left at the same time, okay? All right, so that's using the um, is pressed method there. All right, and that's basically it. Um, so you can try out different key combinations. Maybe you might want to use the WASD keys instead of the left, um, the left up, down, and right arrow keys. So you can try that instead, and um, you can maybe put in other instructions instead. So in the next tutorials, we'll look at how to, um, rather than just move or translate an object, we might be able to rotate it, and we can change its size as well. So there's other methods that we can use there too. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.